Okay, so welcome back. Today we are going to continue a series I did a while back, and actually it's my most popular video series in the last seven years of producing videos. And that series talked about what you see here. And this is a map of the United States, and it gives an indication of the interconnected grid of power lines used by your power company and other power companies across the U.S., all connected together to serve you and other customers with generators that are generating power at different locations. And the power coming out of those generators is fed over these transmission lines to you and all the tens of millions of other customers throughout the United States. And each line here represents what you see here, which is a high voltage trans called a transmission line that feeds lots of power over long distances across the country. And those power lines are all connected into grids. So for example, if you're in say New York City and you plug something into the wall outlet, the electrical wires that feed your wall outlet are actually connected to your utility. And your utility has thousands of power lines all connected in a grid so, in fact, when you plug into your wall outlet, you're connecting to a grid that is also connected to somebody down in, say, Miami, Florida. So it's a huge grid of power lines. And what we were talking about is the need for power companies and other industries to simulate how that big grid of power lines and generators and customer loads is going to respond to a certain configuration. So for example, let's say if um, this part of the country was expected to have more customers, more load in the next 10 years, the power companies have to simulate what's going to happen with their grid as you add more load, given the existing generation and power lines, can the system handle more load? So what they have to do is they have to take the electrical network and model it as a electric circuit with voltage sources and power lines and loads and simulate how the system is going to respond and whether in fact they may need to add more transmission lines or more generators in order to serve the load. So we talked in the beginning part of this series about how you can take information about your generators and your loads and your power lines and feed them into a software application and generate a network inside your software application that's basically an electrical circuit and how you can solve that electrical circuit to see what the power flows, what the currents are, what the voltage is throughout the system to see how your system is going to respond. So what we did is we showed with a simple analogy of a very simple system like this that had a generator. We have a generating plant over here and it's connected to what's called a bus and each of these lines is a transmission line connecting to another bus which is called a substation and that might serve you and your neighbors in your area and we've got different loads connected on this system and we showed how to model this as an electrical circuit, convert all of this data into an electrical circuit that you could solve and print out the results. And that is called a load flow. And it's basically done to simulate for a given set of conditions what the resulting power flows and voltages will be. We also talked about not a static simulation, but what's called a dynamic or stability simulation. And that is where you simulate what happens if you take something out of service. How does the network respond instantaneously? Kind of like if you're driving your car, you slam on the brakes, you simulate how long it takes to actually come to a stop. Or if you speed up, how long does it take to respond? You do a stability simulation in a power system in case, for example, a load trips off. How will the system respond? keeping in mind that these generators are big, massive, rotating machines that have inertia, kind of like the inertia in your car when you're driving. How is that going to respond? Is it going to be able to handle it or is it going to go out of service? So we talked about stability or dynamic response 
as well as the load flow or static response of the power system. And we've also talked about how uh, here in the U.S. we're connected in what you see here, which is grids, and each color represents a separate grid that is all tied together. So we've got the eastern half of the U.S. and Canada all tied into a grid of power lines, and then we've got the western U.S. with western part of Canada tied together. Mexico's got its own power grid. Texas has its own power grid and so on. And throughout the world, India has its own power grid. Europe has its own power grid, the UK. And we talked about that. And what you see here, these colors represent the real-time dynamic frequency, which is a measure of the health of the power system. Is it slowing down? Is it going too slow? Like if your car goes up a hill, is it going to stall out or does it have enough power to continue? So this gives us a real life kind of a heartbeat of the power system. And we had a separate series talking about how you can measure that at your home, measure this power system frequency. So what we did previously in the series is we generated an application, a C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. Doesn't matter what software you use, um, the concepts are the same. And we showed you how to open a file which has data on the power system that you're going to analyze. And we printed out the values and this solve button allows us to figure out the power flows and the voltages. And we press the solve button and it goes through and solves for each line and each bus and each generator what is the resulting power flow for that static configuration of loads and generation. And here we also printed out some uh, matrix values. And what we're going to do in this continuation of this series is previously we didn't have this map giving a visual indication of the results. We just printed it out. And we also, there were a couple other features that we didn't have. One was for one configuration, it gave us the results. What it didn't do was allow us to, in real time, for example, take out one of these lines and then resolve it immediately to find out what the flows and voltages would be for that new configuration. In this continuation of the series, we're going to see if we can come up with a algorithm to allow us to display the results in a map like this. And it turns out that's kind of complicated because your algorithm has to take the data on what exists and figure out how to display that visually with all different types of network configurations. We also are going to add functionality so that we can, instead of reading from a like a CSV or comma separated values file, in a file that looked kind of like this, where you have the buses and the loads and the generators, their parameters, their information listed in the CSV file, what we're going to do is we're going to allow the ability to bring in a database file. And we've talked about how to set up databases previously in this channel. And then ultimately, we're going to show you how to add functionality to do a dynamic simulation where we can do a time simulation when something happens and we can watch the dynamic uh, response of the system over time. So this is a summary of the uh, features we're going to add in the upcoming videos. First one is load flow real time update with changing conditions, which should be pretty simple. Um, we just have to tell it, okay, take this line out of service and rerun the load flow. So that should be fairly simple. The challenging one that may not seem challenging, but when you get into it, you'll probably find out that this is one of the more challenging aspects of this. And that is a dynamic one line diagram, the map, the visual map that can show the diagram and simulation results for a wide range of network configurations. Now, I encourage you, if you're going to be following this series, give some thought to the logic that you might need. You're having input on what buses exist, what generators exist, what lines exist. What you have to do is come out with some logic for any type of network configuration. How can you draw a diagram that will represent that network configuration? We're also going to allow database input. In our case, we're going to use SQLite. We've talked about that previously. And then ultimately, we're going to do a stability analysis over time to measure dynamic response to changing conditions, which means we have to model the inertias of the machines. And we talked about that previously in the series, but 
Now we're going to have a more complicated system and we're going to have to figure out how to do that. And I think in the next couple videos, we're going to take the easiest of those four features. And that is configuring this so that we can in real time take out a piece of equipment or change a value and rerun the load flow. And also the ability to import a SQLite database rather than our CSV file describing the system. So we'll do those two. And then after that, we'll look at the more difficult ones, which is making this one line diagram dynamic for any input data and ultimately doing the stability analysis, giving a real time inertia simulation of the system. So that's it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.